Hey everyone and welcome. In this video we look at Primo Caranista, Piers Moron Morgan, and his attempt to get one of the cops that killed George Floyd's lawyers to show guilt before trial. No Piers, that's not how justice is done. Innocent until proven guilty is a tenant of law that's there for all, regardless of assumed guilt. It's titled, Piers Morgan furious as George Floyd case lawyer storms off after heated GMB interview. Piers Morgan challenged the US lawyer of one of the police officers involved in the death of George Floyd in a heated Good Morning Britain interview that ended with the ITV guests storming off. And I do believe that we have rotten, rotten politics, and I'm, I'm not using that as an exaggeration. Now, this video will concentrate on the lawyer Earl Grey's response, and it isn't good for Piers again, <laughs> in my opinion. Before we read, let's listen to the exchange. I'm sorry, guys and gals, but we can only listen. When I play GMB video, it limited states the video and doesn't get promoted, so we'll just listen to a still, shall we? I don't have to answer anything to you either because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you what I do know what I'm talking gonna, about. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to bed. Good really? night. Okay. Do you realize that, that your whole performance here merely tells the world how disgusting, actually, oh, even the people is... representing these police officers are? Disgusting for doing his job, Piers. Well, thank you for the compliment, because if It wasn't a compliment. Just... But he thought it was, didn't he, Piers? <laughs> Why? Because if you don't like him, you must be doing something right. If you, oh really, I thought it was. If you think I'm gonna sit here and listen to your talk bad about my client, I'm not listening to that. If you would have told me that an hour ago when I did agree to stay up, I would have not agreed to. I don't need- Your client to pulled a gun. Your client about... pulled a gun on George Floyd 90 seconds after he first met him. Why did he do that? Yes. Why? Well, because he did not show his hands. Once he put his hands on his steering wheel, he put the gun in his holster. Why did he do that? Because now his hands were shown. They're on the steering wheel. There, good night. Happy birthday. Look, everybody, uh, okay. is, everybody is entitled to legal representation. You know what? Yeah, he needs another lawyer, and that guy shouldn't be practicing law. <laughs> Seems Piers has a knack of annoying guests. In a country where guns are everywhere, a cop must use his gun for compliance. As Earl Grey said in his reply, it was holstered as soon as his hands were shown. This, in my opinion, stems from Piers' time in the USA, berating them for guns and being forced out of as his racing tanked as a direct response? Did you see his response? He shouldn't be a lawyer. <laughs> Piers, you huge raging Karen. That man has credentials. What do you have? White guilt, a lust for outrage, complete disdain for all of us. Great qualities. Not. Let's read. Earl Grey, the attorney for Thomas Lane, one of the police officers arrested over the death of George Floyd, defended his client in a heated interview with Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid on ITV GMB. Mr Grey said that Mr Lane suggested rolling George Floyd over to Derek Chauvin, the policeman who, who kneeled, who knelt on Mr Floyd's neck, but that he wasn't listened to. He said, so this is Thomas Lane's lawyer then, not the actual officer that knelt on him. He said Thomas Lane was on the fourth day of being a police officer. It's four days in and they're trying to charge him with murder. Chauvin had 20 years of police office as a police officer, adding, my client said twice, shall we roll him over? But as Piers Morgan continued to challenge the US lawyer on his client's involvement in the George Floyd death, Mr. Gray stormed off and ended the interview abruptly. It wasn't abruptly, he told him he was gonna do it and then a couple of minutes later he did it. That's not abruptly, is it? He told Piers Morgan, I'm not gonna answer anything from you because you clearly don't know what you're talking about. And I suspect that that line was all about innocent and pr till proven guilty. He's trying to get him to incriminate his client before he's even gone to court. So Sorry, Piers, not how it's done. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not defending the police officer in any way that did the kneeling, but if this guy's only four days in, is it his responsibility, really? I mean, how much training do police officers have? Uh police officers have before they're out on the field does anyone know let me know can't see it being long about a, a six months or something and then a year on the on on the beat or something like that maybe either way it's not going to be much is it and then he's at four days in and they're trying to charge him with with murder because he's following someone that's been doing it 20 years i can understand why he's reluctant to say anything do you know what i'm going to do he said i'm going to go to bed <laughs> did you see Pierce's face when he said it as well 
To which Piers replied, do you realise that your whole performance here merely tells the world how disgusting actually even the people representing these police officers are? No, what it actually tells the world, Karen, is that you're a major Karen, being Karen, showing Karens up for not being Karen enough. You understand where I'm going with that one, <laughs> you idiot. The defence lawyer hit back. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> I love it. If you think I'm not going, I'm going to sit here and listen to you talk bad about my client, I'm not listening to that. If you would have told me that an hour ago when I did agree to stay up, I wouldn't have agreed to it. <laughs> Shortly after the explosive clash, the outspoken GMB host took to Twitter to vent his fury. Of course he did, because that's all he is. He's a, he's a outrage baiter, is he not? He said, wow, what an extraordinary and depressing interview with a lawyer for one of the George Floyd murder police officers. It's not murder until proven, is it? Sneering, arrogant, dismissive, inhuman, shameful. What? Sneering from this man? Is he, is he intentionally trying to be hypocritical because then he'll get rage clicks on Twitter? Do you think that's what it is? Do you think, because we all know he's a rage beta, but it seems to be that he can't survive a day without finding something to Karen at. Thousands of people took to the streets over the weekend to protest against police brutality and the death of George Floyd across the world. Really, is that what it was? Is that exactly what it was? So why are they taking down our statues then? Is it really about that? No, it's not. Shut up with your lies. In London, Metropolitan Police said 12 people were arrested and 8 officers were injured during Sunday's anti-racism demonstrations. It's actually 27 now. 27 injured in mainly pe peaceful demonstrations. You see where I'm going with this? The media are it complicit with all of the violence that's been going on. In fact, they've been lording over it. Most of the arrests were related to public order offences, while one was for criminal damage following an in incident at the Cenotaph. Trying to set fire to the Union Jack, that one was. It comes after Scotland Yard said 29 people were arrested and 14 officers were injured during the clashes between police and protesters the day before. Sunday's Black Lives Matter rallies attracted thousands of people right across the UK. Pop superstar Lewis Capaldi was pictured up. I'm not interested in that. London Black Lives Matter also organised an online protest via Zoom for those unable to attend the demonstrations, which attracted more than 10,000 people. I wonder if they smashed their houses up. Just a thought. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Operational Patrol Unit of the Warwickshire Police tweeted the M6 southbound was temporarily closed because they couldn't be bothered moving some people off the motorway after 6pm due to pedestrian protesters blocking the carriageway at Junction 3. In Manchester, hundreds crowded into St Peter's Square, not interested in virtue signalling. In Bristol, protesters toppled the bronze memorial to slave trader Edward Colston and dumped it into the harbour. Avon and Somerset Police said they had launched an investigation and were seeking to identify those involved with the removal of the statue. Won't be difficult, they all had their faces uncovered. Home Secretary Priti Patel called toppling the memorial utterly disgraceful, and it was, and I'll tell you the reason why soon. I think that is utterly disgraceful, and that speaks to the acts of public disorder that actually have now become a distraction from the cause in which people are actually protesting and trying to emphasise and sympathise, she said. No one's sympathising at the minute now. They've lost that with te tearing things down and destroying stuff. Peaceful protest doesn't end in violence. In a statement to the BBC, the B Mayor of Bristol, Marvin Rees, said it was important to listen to those who found the statue to represent an affront to humanity. Marvin Rees is an absolute disgrace of a mayor. Let me just let you know, Bristol had a vote not long ago about this exact statue and remove lost Badly. People thought it should stay and a plaque placed on it so we can learn by our mistakes and never repeat them. These idiots don't care about undam how undemocratic this is. My opinion, Piers is a salty bitch, isn't it? He's <laughs> that, has, that has taken Karenism to a whole new level, stoking racial tensions and applauding protesters that are fundamentally anti-English. Yes, I did say that. Where does this stop, Piers? All statues, everything? What's next? Books? People? When do we tear down Gandhi, MLK, Mandela, because they offend some people? You see what I mean by that? The media, peers included, are making slavery a purely English thing. One question, peers. Where did we buy the slaves from? Notice the silence. Yep, that's right. Other Africans. Slavery is still going on worldwide. BLM? Nothing. Crickets. No mention whatsoever. Defund the BBC. 
Rule Britannia. <laughs> we were not the only slavers. Africa and Arabia were trading before and also after us. We abolished it. The debt we accrued buying slave freedom in the USA and worldwide has only just been paid off in 2015. So any Brit paying taxes have directly aided freedoms for blacks worldwide. What's your opinion on this, everyone? I'd like to know your opinion on the, on, especially on the defacing our history. I don't, I'm not saying that I agree with everything that these people on pedestals have been, uh, uh, have done, but shouldn't we be able to see it in it, all of its horror so we can actually learn by those mistakes and never do them again? The next step is burning books that they don't agree with. What, what's next? People that don't agree with them. You understand where I'm going with this? This is a extremely slippery slope in my opinion. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate everyone that comes by every time and, sh and shares it out. You guys are amazing. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.